We are going all in on these markets, guys. The top five altcoins we see absolutely exploding this cycle as we get insane ETF news coming out of the markets today. We have bridges collapsing that we're going to be covering with you guys. But more importantly, talking about where we're heading with Bitcoin's price action into the later latter year of 2024. I broke, guys. Let's go. Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. Good morning, beautiful people. We saw that coming from you, Bob. We saw that message, just so you know. But guys, look <laughs> at what just happened in Baltimore. This is just absolutely shocking. Uh, Baltimore Bridge, almost 1.6 miles long, completely collapsed last night, uh, which is just absolutely wild to see. It looks like a cargo ship just ran into it. Uh, so this is kind of breaking news. If you guys have been on Twitter, of course, or X, you've been seeing this take place over the last 24 hours. Awful. Uh, but that is just absolutely awful. I just wanted to share that because, I mean, it is... What are your thoughts on this? I mean, just seeing that happen is absolutely wild. Yeah, I've never seen that happen. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, there's definitely going to be a little economic turmoil from this. Uh, if we share my screen, the blockage... This from the Amuse account. I don't know how yep. if this is verified, but it says the blockage will be cleared within 24 hours. We are, you know... We have nothing but respect for the families and the people who are going through this. I don't know if anyone even got injured. I think it was just, you know, a lot of fatalities there. But it will take months to repair the bridge. Shipping won't be disrupted very long at all. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be a long time for that bridge is uh, put back up. Well, that's wild to see. I think we have that as well as Diddy, I believe, is on the run, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Oh, but Lord. right now, everybody wants to know what is happening in these markets. Because, obviously, Bitcoin has dropped from $71,000 to roughly... Uh, 69,000, it's jumping a little bit back now. I think it touched like $69,000 on the dot about five minutes ago. Uh, so we're gonna be diving into all the ETF news and everything that matters in these markets today. But Ethereum sitting at 3,500. We have Solana at $190, still up significantly. We have BNB up 12% for the last week, but you know down to $577. XRP at 63 cents. Dogecoin, 17 cents. Cardano, 65 cents. And right now in that hourly, guys, as you can see, everything is down. So hopefully we'll start to see a little bit of green and we're starting to see the green on the stable coins, which does mean, well, we're going to be getting a little profits to be taken right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of Cardano noise happening right now. You know, I, I almost want to address that. If we look, Cardano is pretty much flat for the day is 0.1%. I believe I have it right here. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Uh, yeah, right here. This is an interesting metric that not a lot of people know that Cardano has transactions within transactions. I believe we can hear this is only about 30 seconds. I'm, I might even uh, cut it off halfway. The transactions this is a typical Cardano block right there. You see transactions, within, transactions within one transaction. transaction. Mm -hmm. you click Look at on that. that. So uh, when you see a lot of noise about Cardano, one, so I think 2.3, 1.6, I see different numbers. Uh, you know, it's not as bleak as one uh, would make it out when you start looking at what an actual transaction is. Yeah, I think we covered that really well with our interview with Charles Hoskinson on the channel. So if you guys want to learn more about that, make sure you guys go watch that really cool interview. Uh, we have Alex here coming saying, Trust Wallet keeps saying that these are problems with Cardano Network. Reason why I can't sell, buy, send, receive any Cardano. Any advice? I don't know if you use Trust Wallet, uh, but do you I have, have any insight used, on that? Uh, I believe it's, I don't know if it was a, uh, a issue with the network or an issue with, you know, they don't have the people that code for that chain. I, I can I can look into that. There's a couple of people here who have trust wallets. I know Justin does. I'll ask him. Well, I do know we need to smash that like button on today's video, guys, because if you guys were watching yesterday, this is a definite reason to subscribe to this channel today. Velodrome or Velodrome here, guys, is up massively in the last 24 hours. This is something that we were talking about being that next aerodrome here. It is the aerodrome of optimism on what I like to call it. Uh, but yeah, ever since we called this in a Discord at about, I think it was like eight cents, it's up over 100% right now. And it's going wild in that last 24 hours. And you know, I think honestly, the optimism ecosystem is just getting started here. I think you had something to say off that though. You were like... No, uh, it's it's more uh, just pain, pain from sitting on the <laughs> sidelines. We have a guy here who works, uh, Tim, not T.A. Tim, a different Tim. And Tim said, oh, yeah, I, I learned that he had bought Arrow. And so I was like, hey, man, congrats, you know, getting that Arrow. I didn't know you jumped in when I first had that call because we were talking about the 5X. Mm -hmm. He told me yesterday, probably 3 p.m., oh, yeah, man, I actually took a lot of profit and rolled it into Velo. I looked at him dead in his eyes. I said, 
that is such a great strategy. I love that. I, I need to do that too. And then I end up doing ATB, just, got distracted, totally forgot about it till you just mentioned that. DZ missed out on it the It happens to the best pump. stuff. I, I missed out on a uh, aerodrome. So, you know, it's feeling a little bit good. Those profits oh, wait, are wait. there. Whoa, whoa. What, what do you oh, have? What no. do you have? I'm not actually that upset because I looked, I was like, all right, so I missed out on it's what, a 38% up. pump? Uh, like well, 80%. No, what was Velo? No, 24 hours. On Velo? Yeah, what was it just uh, now? 40, 40.3, 38 point something. <laughs> You know what? I, I'm not mad if a 38% Yeah, 40, pump. 41%. Okay. My, I, I can't like be upset 52%. that I got a 33% pump. <laughs> I, so I, I would have well, sold. And that's exactly probably why this is moving with it too. You know what I mean? Like Aerodrum's obviously leading okay. that category. That makes me feel so a little better. So you're still crushing it. Yeah. And now everybody's crushing it, holding onto both of these tokens. Uh, but you guys know the drill. You guys got to smash that like button to see your favorite cryptos in that top 24-hour percentage here. We have Aptos at the lead Right now at $18.53 with 15% up. Dog with hat up 14%. Fetch AI uh, getting a little bit of a bounce again, up 11%. ICP been kind of the leader of the last few days, up 71% that is in just the last seven days. Now a top 20 token by far uh, with a market cap of eight point, almost $9 billion. Just say that from here. Uh, yeah, if you look at the three-month chart, that thing has uh, really, really just been on a run from $11. So it looks like a nice, very local bottom, $10.96. You can see here, you know, using that as a support, using it as support, didn't quite come down to $10 even, came down to $10 and some change, and a nice little double up since. Uh, if we look at the date there, wow, March 20th. So six days, in just six days, it's been on a run. Yeah, and a lot of people look like they're winning from our calls out here on this channel. We have George asking though, Josh, will this Arrow project be the big thing this boring? I, I'm just going to say, you know, DeFi and Layer 2s, I think, are obviously going to be the next biggest trend. But Arrow's already performed exponentially. I think it's done like a 5x since you first actually mentioned it. It's up from like $0.08 cents a little bit earlier this year. Uh, and then, you know, just as these ecosystems grow, George, and everybody that's listening, if you're brand new to these markets, you know, Layer 1s you know, were the thing of 2021. This cycle's been these new Layer 2s, the Optimisms, these Arbitrums, the Aptoses, and those DEXs and the projects that are going to see the most amount of liquidity are the ones that are going to be seeing all the transactions take place. So that's why I'm really bullish on these DEXs. It's virtually the Uniswap of Arbitrum, or sorry, of Optimism. And the same thing with Arrow is the Uniswap of base, if I'm not or not wrong at that moment. Uh, someone else uh, said Beam, you know, since yeah. we were talking about some alts, Beam actually just went insane in the past 40 minutes or so. Uh, maybe not even that. Oh so if we gosh. look right there, that happened at 10.05. It is, uh, so last 38 minutes, uh, this thing has just been drunk. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, going I must have been drunk, coolest. though, with my choice of clothes this morning because DZ is looking... Not sleazy. <laughs> no, but it's just a turtleneck, man. Yeah, uh, we're looking good today, dude. Yeah, no, those charts, so that is a green. That is green as you can get with that from Beam's price action. We have in the top losers, though, in the last 24 hours, oh, guys, no. are going to be Toncoin here at 10%. Uh, still, you know, it's not number 11 anymore, but still a top 12 token. And I honestly, this just makes sense. I mean, Toncoin was up like 50% as a top 15 project. Like that, we're talking billions in volume mm -hmm. actually move into this network, which is wild to see. AIOZ hanging on by a thread for the top 100 here. Another project we've covered a lot because they have obviously rebranded their entire website as this D-pin narrative and had a really smart marketing push that allowed them to honestly take and capture that top 100. Phantom here down 4%. And really besides that, your biggest one would be Conflux to eat the China. But look at that seven days. Guys, 40%, 30%, 30%, 20%, 30%. These are massive moves. And honestly, seeing these little healthy pullbacks are obviously going to be what you want to watch for. So, you know, I'm not too scared about at, uh, these markets at all. Yeah, and uh, you don't have it on uh, Coin Gecko has Ondo in the top 100. I guess not on Coin Market Cap. Ondo coming oh. in at 96. Dude, shout out to another victory lap. 13% pump in the last seven days. I would not worry too much about losing 1.3%. That's on Coin Gecko? Yeah, Coin Gecko. Man, There's a couple is... coins. Uh, so the first coin that you're going to see a divergence on is wrapped ETH. Uh, no, Lido staked ETH. And so that's why even the top 10 looks different. Are we looking at the seven-day chart there? Is that how you're doing yeah, it? Yeah, seven-day. Oh, gotcha. Seven yeah, day seven, on Dude, Ondo, Internet Computer, Conflicts. Dude, Conflicts up 107% in seven days. This is just... This is insane money you, should, you guys be right You should look right at, the, uh, at the yearly on Conflicts. It's like, absurd. <laughs> it's just a straight line up. <clears throat> Basically, well, yeah. Well, hey... Guys, I think all coins are about to pump even more. We have a lot of huge announcements coming out. First and foremost, London Stock Exchange to launch crypto ETNs. For you guys that don't know, the launch is conditional upon the approval of base prospectus or 
prospectuses by the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA. This is necessary step in listing these financial instruments on the main market and the FCA's official list. The decision is set uh, is the decision to set the trading commencement for late May 28th of 2024 is deliberate. It aims to include the maximum number of issuers right from the get-go. More of the issuers interested in being part of this launch are required to submit specific details by April 15th of 2024. This meticulous pre pre preparation reflects the LSE's commitment to ensuring that all listed crypto ETNs meet the highest standards of transparency and regulatory compliance. However, issuers who fail to comply by May 22nd will be ineligible for the initial day of trading. Now, on top of this, guys, because this is still a big move coming from London, you have now Hong Kong, as mentioned by Eric Belchunas on Twitter, saying, looks like Hong Kong is going to be allowing, uh, are going to allow in-kind creations and redemptions for spot Bitcoin ETFs in 2Q, unlike US, which is cash creations only, which could help spark more AUM assets under management and volume in the fast-growing region via new note today from, and this is Rebecca uh, SK on Twitter. So you can see that the Hong Kong uh, ETFs traded volume from 2010 to 2023 is just up and to the right at this point. And Hong Kong is lacking in terms of the uh, the adoption curve with the Bitcoin ETFs a little bit behind the United States. But this could initially spark another massive market for Bitcoin adoption. I mean, we saw what happened on January You know 10th. why it's going to have that spark. And uh, don't worry, folks, we are going to give you the altcoin picks towards the end of the show. But uh I was wondering, I was like, I'm pretty sure BlackRock's just everywhere. So I was wondering, you know, what is the BlackRock of the UK? Well, it is BlackRock. BlackRock has uh, offices in London. You can see it right there. And well, what about Hong Kong, right? Higher odds, BlackRock wouldn't be operating there. Oh, no, no. They have a giant Hong Kong office as well. Multinational group of talented people, Ooh. the Asia Pacific region. So if BlackRock wants to really push Bitcoin in the US, you know, looks like they're going to want to have the same playbook for England uh, and uh, Hong Kong as well. And there's even talks by Bitcoin Munger here who says, as I stated last week, Hong Kong ETFs will be far more bullish catalysts than the US ETFs. And his reasons are, coins have been moving uh, from the West to the East. Makes a strong case that the Hong Kong ETFs are going to be a far more bullish catalyst than these US ETFs. So that is kind of an interesting take here. And Eric Balchunas did respond though saying, well, let's not get crazy, Hong Kong tiny versus the US. Still, though, another bullish catalyst. Are we going to get these Ethereum ETFs approved? Where are we heading in this cycle? Because, of course, guys, if the Ethereum ETFs get approved, I think everyone in this chat right now, you're anticipating an alt season. An mm -hmm. alt season has not came yet in comparison to Bitcoin's price and market cap. So are we going to get that alt season that we saw in 2021? And those are exactly the altcoins we're going to talk about towards the end of this live stream, guys. So make sure you smash that like button. Oh, yeah. I got a, I got two really good picks that uh, people are really going to want to pay attention to. A Cardano ecosystem play and a Solana ecosystem play. Nice. I consider them stronger projects within each of these coins. Yeah, and there is a very bullish tweet from uh, Casey Amador, I think is his how the, the last part of his Twitter handle, uh, on Bitcoin DeFi we'll get to. So Grayscale Ooh. Executive sees path to Ethereum ETF approval despite the SEC silence. Uh, for you guys that didn't know, Craig Salm, the chief legal officer at Grayscale suggested that the U.S. SEC's perceived lack of engagement with spot Ethereum exchange traded funds ETF applicants wouldn't be a decisive factor that would hinder the prospects of such products. In a March 25th post on X, we will be able to see that he said recently there's been a lot of chatter about spot Ethereum ETFs. I personally am not deterred by it and believe that ETFs should be approved. But right now I want to talk about how I think perceived lack of SEC engagement should be viewed at this point. And point two, he says, in the final moments leading up to the Bitcoin ETF approval, Grayscale and other, others received positive and constructive engagement from the SEC. We had thoughtful conversations and discussed the finer details of creation and redemption procedures, cash versus in-kind, APs, LPs, and custodies, etc. All of these issues were figured out and are identical when comparing spot Bitcoin to Ethereum ETFs. The only difference is rather than the ETF holding Bitcoin, it holds Ether. So in many ways, the SEC already has engaged and issuers simply have less to engage on this time. Perhaps I feel differently as we get closer to the final approval denial dates in late of May. Uh, but at this point, I don't think perceived lack of engagement from regulators should be an indicative, or indicative um, of one outcome or the other. Further, I 100% agree with others like uh, I am Paul Gruel and of course, Brian uh, Kentons here on Twitter ha who have said that about why Ethereum spot ETFs should be approved. 
Consistency with Ethereum futures ETFs, regulation of ETH futures as commodity futures, high correction, our correlation between futures and spot. Now, of course, guys, you know, we've seen multiple interviews from DZ on the channel with Eric Balchunas and, of course, uh, James, who were the ones that predicted the Bitcoin spot ETF. And at this moment, they're pessimistic on the approval of these things. They're looking at a 25% approval weight mm -hmm. for May. They're not saying it's out of the picture, but it does push us to the narrative that maybe these ETFs won't get passed until BlackRock's ETFs are their final deadline in August. I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Uh, well, there's another camp, right? So that's the bearish take, but there are some bullish takes. And I don't know if the bullish takes are related to their bags here, but Arthur Hayes, uh, he basically, he has an assessment too, and he's saying it will happen. Mm -hmm. Why is it going to happen? Because the banks want to make money off of it. And so that's why it's going to happen. If we go down to his uh, quote here, uh, here's the article, BitMEX founder Arthur Hayes says ETH will catch a big bid amid the ETF hype. Here's his outlook. Uh, that's him. Uh, that's Toshi, the cat chasing an Ethereum. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. You did uh, it. Here's, here's his uh, quote right here down at the bottom. Here's the good quote, at least. And guess what? Now you have a product traded that you as a bank earn fees on? There's no way that these ETFs don't get approved. The banks run everything in every single major jurisdiction. So if the banks want to make money on these things, they will have them. So the other side of the analysis is the other side of the coin well, the banks are going to make money off of it. The big banks kind of run everything. And so it is going to happen. Yeah. And I, I think another take on this too is like everybody saw what happened with Bitcoin ETFs. They were said that, or they were told that this wasn't going to happen. That, you know, of course, this was just some giant money laundering index. And the entire time, the banks were setting themselves up for their success. And so with the Ethereum ETF, I think it's something that every, everybody already anticipates. It's very similar. So whether that comes in May or in, you know, of course, August, no matter what it is coming here, how many, uh, how many bots are in here, uh, says Buddy. Uh, buddy, are you the bot? You know, maybe it might just is. be you. Takes um, me to no one. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys <laughs> got him. Oh, my gosh. Dang. He's going to cry from that Play one. My robot. Well, we uh, have also five alts. Please, sir, don't worry, Rodrigo. We are going to share the five alts. I got one of the best coins on Solana, one of the best coins on Cardano. I don't know what Josh's three are going to be, but I, I heard they're, they're magnificent. Big. They they're are. Big. They are huge. Big. They'll be huge. 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 Yeah, just huge. like that. You guys know what's up. You know what else is huge? Well, Neil. Hey, Whoa. it's not the size that matter. It's the motion of the ocean. And no. in that motion is other companies starting to bring Bitcoin to their balance sheet. So Nilam Resources files letters of intent to acquire 24,800 Bitcoin. That's insane. $1.7 billion worth of Bitcoin uh, stated from this company. So this letter of intent, guys, uh, it says right here, Nilam Resources, Inc. will issue a newly authorized preferred class of Series C stock in exchange for 24,800 Bitcoins. I wish they would just give us one of those. At a discounted rate relative to current market prices, the company adds in the press release. Nilam says that the entity that holds the Bitcoin will also hold other digital assets that remain unnamed. And the purchase Bitcoin and other digital assets will serve as collateral to raise capital for future projects under Nilam. All right, Chad, besides big, Ethereum, what are big. the other coins? Go, go, go. What, what are the other coins going to be besides Bitcoin and Ethereum that this mining company is going to hold? Maybe Chainlink. Maybe. Ooh, I like Chainlink. Maybe. Uh, I like Chainlink. What else would be top? I don't know if they would be BNB. I would say Chainlink and maybe Matic. Uh, Kulo. No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a meme coin. Everybody. It's just Bonk, Shiba, Actually, and <laughs> what if it was Doge? It's like I, I could some see snake. Being... Some snake. Hey, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, we have. I was gonna... <laughs> Bitcoin price blast past seventy one thousand dollars ahead of this having. So for you guys, you know, obviously, if you guys are just coming into the market, the price of Bitcoin has jumped to a weekly high of more than seventy one thousand dollars, with just a few weeks to go before the cryptocurrency's much anticipated block rewards having. Bitcoin's price touched $71,000 Monday evening and before pulling back and surging to a high of $71,419 as of Tuesday morning. Bitcoin has had a volatile couple of weeks since posting its all-time high of almost $74,000 earlier this month. And obviously, it plunged to 62 k And I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. I'm going to pull up the Fear and Greed Index as always, guys. If you don't use this tool, this is by far one of the greatest tools on the market. We are actually working on a really cool uh, SaaS product for you guys in the chat. You guys are going to love. But All right. While, real quick, while you uh, get yeah. to the right part of the page, Link, OP, Bonk, Avalanche. I could actually see uh, that being Ooh. on there. Litecoin, if they have uh, a boomer. You know uh, what? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Litecoin. I actually That or either. even Bitcoin Cash. They would just pull a Robin Hood. <sighs> they, just, they just buy a whole bunch and like pump the coin itself. Yeah, and then they then they and use then they that. To yeah, then they dump to it to go raise. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, it sounds like a plan to me. Uh, well, we're back into extreme greed on the fear and greed index. So Whoa, we were up to, uh, yeah, that we bought up that dip so quick is what wow. happened here. And, you know, my take here is that honestly, we're going to see this higher green part, guys. If you guys, you know, obviously don't know how this works, you generally want to buy when it's in the red. You want to dollar cost average when it's in the orange here. You want to hodl in the light green and you want to take profit in the dark green. Now, unfortunately, it's not anybody's fault. The majority of these markets, 99% of pit part market participants are going to come into the top of a market cycle. So they're going to come into the middle of the bull run towards the end of the bull run. And you're going to only really ever see both the light green and this dark green right between that sliver. And that's when we're, we've, where we've been hovering. So we might jump up to 90. We might go back to 70. We might go back up to 84. And it kind of just keeps bouncing back and forth. And that's because of the greed that is in these markets currently today. So you know, we are back to that 81 level, and that's going to kind of lead us to, I, I want to get your thoughts first. Are you picking up at these ranges? Do you think we'll see 55K Bitcoin? Or should people be focusing on more so of a strategy called dollar cost averaging I, when we get any dip in this market? I don't hate DCAing into Bitcoin, even when, you know, you're expecting alts to outperform. You know, I wouldn't say do it, you know, 100% of the time. But, you know, to me, it's if you want to do it one out of five DCA days, you know, that, that sounds like a pretty uh, good strategy. I'm not too interested in buying Bitcoin above $65,000 or even $62,000. If I start seeing Bitcoin in the 40s and 50s, to me, that feels like the 20s and 30s of yesteryear. What about for the 90% of the audience, though, that is coming to this market late, right? They didn't I'm, I'm get buying in. A they top didn't 10 come coin. in. You're buying top 10 I'm buying coins. a top 10 coin, and that's going to be my new Bitcoin, so to speak. And so, you know, do a little research. Maybe you dive into the Solana ecosystem and you love what you see there. Maybe you dive into... Cardano ecosystem, maybe you go into top 15 and you're just, you know, Ethereum's already pumped and I feel Avalanche is echoing earlier Ethereum days or just Chainlink, you know, Chainlink yeah. to me is a pretty good Bitcoin equivalent in one's mind, like something that is going to be needed in the future and big banks are going to want a lot of it. Yeah. And it's also why we're paying attention to the new emerging trends, right? That's where that opportunity is really going to be found. And, you know, I'm going to be doing a little bit of the liquidations in the TA here for us today, guys, to kind of see where Bitcoin is moving next. And we've pointed this out a ton. So I'm going to pull up another website right now called Signals as well. Uh, but the first thing is these liquidations. So if you guys are brand new, don't get scared. All you need to know is the brighter the color, the more money is at that level. And that's where market makers want to push that price action. So you'll see there is a very thin, bright level here now above 75K. If I were to zoom in, that would be as probably about as bright as the yellow right above us at this zone here at 72K. Right as a baboon's 74. Ass. Just as bright. Is that bright though? Or is that yeah, kind it's of... it's like bright red. Bright and... Yeah, that's... I didn't want that Google picture in right my name. Uh, Dan Schneider could tell you about <laughs> Oh, gr All wow. right. All right, back to wow. Bitcoin price levels. Sorry. Well, so, you know, of course, when we see this range now, though, down at 60,000, it's about 62,000, 63,000. <laughs> I don't expect us to break these ranges. And every time we tap down here, it, we're just creating more and more support. So for me, my target right now is going to be about the 72K level. If we break this liquidation zone, guys, it's going to be upside to that 75K. The Ooh. other thing I want to point out, though, is how well Signals has played out for us. You guys would know we talk about these yellow bars. All you guys need to know is this yellow range right here. This is a magnet. The price loves to pull to those price where points. Where it wicks, it will stick. Exactly. And this yellow point equates perfectly to where you generally see these bright yellow oh, lines. Oh, we got a trifecta then, because we also have the open interest. So there's a whole bunch of Bitcoin options expiring in three days, everybody. This is on Friday. Uh, we could get into the weeds. Basically, it's calls, it's puts, it's bears versus bulls. Let's just get to the meat and potatoes. Every time I see this, I just want people to get to the point. Here's the point. The price to the downside, we have a max pain point, 50K. I mean, I don't I don't think it goes down that low. Yeah. Uh, but we also have, uh, you know, the put call ratio right around 67. But the upside, this is uh, where you're going to, you know, where all the bulls wanted to go, 75K, which is just that Ooh. number that you saw earlier. So 50 to the bottom seems a little unlikely, uh, 75 to the upside. Yeah. And it just goes to show on the charts, guys. That's We came down to the 61,000. We covered this on the show. We were like, this more than likely is going to turn into support, turn into crazy support. And we've just seen that upside now testing that major level. So as soon as we break through this, it does look like bulls are not running out of seams. It's kind of like David Goggins with just kind of just running marathon after marathon, never slowing down. He's not going to slow down. Yeah, move That's over, where, Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, I'm crossing some, the country. This is some Forrest Gump price action, yeah. and it looks bullish. 
and it is looking like it is going to continue higher here. So you went over the options here. We also have over $6 billion worth of Bitcoin moved by the fifth richest Bitcoin whale. Now, to me, I've tracked, I've done this, right? In the multiple, multiple cycles that I've been in this, and I'm sure you've done this as well, there is a point in your cycle career where you start tracking Bitcoin whales' wallets. You think it's the most genius idea. You're mm -hmm. like, this is actually, this is how I'm going to trade like the best. This is how I'm going to make millions. Come to realize that whales, guys, they might move billions of dollars or millions of dollars here and there. And it almost, there's almost never a correlation to price action. I don't know if you have that same thought or... It depends on the whales. Depends Justin on Sun, the whales. Justin ETH Foundation, they sell. You could probably do pretty well selling when they sell. And when they buy, it does push up. But that's like Justin Sun specifically. Yeah, very, Vitalik very Buterin. Um, you know, so for this one though, the fifth largest Bitcoin holding address, also dubbed 37X, has moved over $6 billion worth of Bitcoin to three new addresses for the first time since 2019. Despite the Bitcoin price reaching an all-time high before the halving for the first time in history, the incoming supply issuance reduction is still not priced into the full extent, co-founder of DAX, Decentralized Exchange, a former executive director, told Cointelegraph. Oh, perfect. Hey, we do got a uh, special guest today. Did we even mention it in the top of the show? Uh, we did not, no. but oh, we were mess. saving the surprise uh, introduction here we're for somebody talking that... about Bitcoin, <laughs> teasing five altcoins. Meanwhile, we got a wonderful guest. Teasing, yeah, teasing the altcoins, the thunder. I don't know if you can hear it through the mic, Natalie, but it is pouring outside today and uh, markets are just rattled. But welcome back to the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on here today. We got a lot of ton. We have tons of questions for you. But how are you doing? Well, thanks for having me. Um, I don't think we're in the same city, but it was pouring all night last night. So uh, I, I guess the storms are coming. But <laughs> I don't think it's coming for Bitcoin. I think uh, Bitcoin has sunny, sunny skies ahead. Are you in Georgia or no? I'm in St. Louis. Okay, so a couple states away, but might be still the same thunder. It's coming from your guys' you know area, which is why we're getting the rain today. But we want to ask you, okay, I think we've seen almost every single interview you've produced on your channel, and there's a lot of conversations right now about there's probably four main events that are going to be happening in 2024. One of the biggest is going to be the interest rate cuts. And as, of course, as an investing journalist that's been speaking to the people that have been analyzing this for week after week at this point, what does, the, what does this mean for Bitcoin's price action? Is this bearish or is this bullish with whatever the feds are going to decide to do? Well, I think in the near term, it's going to remain pretty choppy, uh, but to the upside, right? We do have these new ETF products that are seeing significant amounts of demand. Um, the last week, the price was hit a little bit by the GBTC outflows, but there's still more net buying than selling. So I think in the short term, it might be rocky, especially given the macro factors that we have. The Fed did signal that they're going to cut interest rates. Usually when they cut, that's not a very good sign. It usually means something's going wrong in the economy and we do still have sticky inflation so you know it's anyone's guess what's going to happen in the short term but i think overall what we do have is the fed is still um you know in, in trying to take take control of the wheel in terms of fighting inflation, but inflation is ticking up higher. We're in fiscal dominance as Luke Groman, who was just on my show, puts it, meaning that we're mm -hmm. just spending more and more money as, as a government that we really can't afford putting the tab on future generations. And all of that really is bullish for risk assets because as the money comes out, it has to go somewhere and it typically goes to equities. It's obviously going into Bitcoin. Um, gold recently doing pretty well too. So I, I think Bitcoin's gonna look pretty good this year. All right. Now you're bringing up the short term, but I want to highlight something on the long term, and that is Kathy Wood's bold prediction of a <laughs> $3.8 million Bitcoin. Yeah. I think uh, in a long enough time scale, we all think it's possible. Sure. The year 2150, you know, who, who knows what a can of Coke costs or a pound of coffee beans or what one Bitcoin would cost. What, what is your thoughts of a million dollar Bitcoin, $3.8 million Bitcoin? A lot of people think, well, that won't happen in my lifetime. But what would you say to that? Yeah, I was pretty uh, pleasantly surprised by her new bullish prediction that she mentioned at the Bitcoin Investor Day. Originally, ARK Invest uh, was forecasting a, about a $1.5 million Bitcoin by 2030, but she said that she upped that prediction because of all the institutional demand that is coming in, especially with these ETF products. And a lot of pension funds are going to be shifting um, some of their allocations to Bitcoin because of the performance. It speaks for itself. So, I mean, I don't think it's out of the 
question, but I tend to have more um, humble expectations. I like to temper <laughs> my uh, my views on Bitcoin. I mean, I do think eventually it will get to a, a million a coin. I don't know how long that will take, but that will also mean what is a million dollars worth, right? Because at the end of the day, one of the great things about Bitcoin is it protects you from the debasement of the currency. And a hundred dollars isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. A million dollars isn't what it used to be. Look at houses, right? So um, I, I don't know what that will mean, but of course, Bitcoin will hit a million at some point. Yeah, this comes as well, like you just said it too, like they can't stop printing money at this point. We had a $1.2 trillion bill just pass. It's, you know, this government just can't get that budget in wraps. They can't control it. They can't stop themselves from printing more money. Do you see this trend just continuing to emerge? Are we ever going to see a reduction in these bills? It feels like every single one that comes through is just higher and higher. The next one's going to be 1.5. Then it's going to be 2 trillion. Is this going to be what pushes us to more sovereign nations adopting Bitcoin? And could that fall over to Kathy Wood's price prediction of this 3.8 million because of the inflation? I do. I mean, this is the debt spiral that so many people in the space refer to and and why they call it the fiat Ponzi, because our system requires ever expanding credit to produce less and less real growth and productivity, which is what's really sad. And that's what's decimating the middle class and, and the working class. And that's why they need a life raft like Bitcoin. So yes, of course, they're going to have to keep spending. Um, a lot of that's going to go to interest expense. At some point, you know, the buck has to stop when the interest rates get so high that the interest rate um, uh, servicing is, is is too much for the government. They're going to have to lower it again and try to inflate it away. And of course, that debases the dollar, crushes everyone's purchasing power. So you need to find hard, scarce assets. And Bitcoin, I think, is the best one. And it's proven itself over the uh, the last 15 years. And with these new products, I think it's only, um, you know, the 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 sky is the, the limit for Bitcoin. Well, speaking of debt, you know, we have had a couple presidents operate our government with a surplus. I, I think a lot of younger people, that's just almost impossible to fathom. Wait, we pulled in more money than we spent? I, I didn't know that was possible. I think it was almost probably 30 years ago. Clinton did it. Slick Willie. But at this point, you know, you brought up the debt. Are, are debt payments so high we'll never have a deficit again? Well, if you actually look... If you look at the uh, Congreg Congressional Budget Office, their projections, they are looking at an expansion of the balance sheet and, and growing debt over the next several decades, which really you have to start to question how are we going to be able to pay for that? And how is this sustainable? And uh, Citadel CEO, Ken Griffin, I just covered this on my show. He said that that's one of the biggest underappreciated risks. What we're doing, especially on a global um, stage, you know, we're really hurting the dollar. We are hurting the ability um, for people to continue to trust our currency and to continue to purchase our bonds. And so who's gonna have to buy them? We are, and we're going to have to print the money to do it and continue to destroy purchasing power. So people really need to protect themselves. This is why I'm really passionate about helping people understand this because so many people are going around blaming politics and, you know, becoming polarized, thinking that what's to blame is whether it's red or or blue, but it's not. Our money is broke and they need to look deeper. And that's what Bitcoin kind of forces you to do is look at the underlying system, what's broken in it, how how messed up the incentives are, and what can we actually do to fix it? Because we can talk about the problems all day, but let's focus on the solution so that we can build a better future that's more prosperous and has more opportunity for everyone. Yeah, people seem to forget that it's two parties under one very broken system. And that kind of leads to, of course, how do we move from this? Because, of course, the BlackRock, the Vanguards, the straight, the State Streets, the Fidelities, they've lied to us year after year after year, saying this is a money laundering index, that we need to risk manage, that betting ourselves on this risky asset class is only going to damage us in the futures. Yet they're turning around and launching the very financial uh, instruments that are going to make them, let's face it, billions upon billions of dollars in the future. Should we be for, or even, I guess what would the right question be here is, should we be protesting this as an industry with these asset managers coming into this? Or how do we adopt this without favoring them once again and breaking the system all over again? Well, first of all, always watch what they do, not what they say. Um, I, I do think it's really interesting to see how many turnarounds there have been, even from some of the most legendary investors who once said um, they weren't into Bitcoin and now they are extremely for it or launching products. I think that everyone who joins the Bitcoin network and starts adopting this technology, it's accretive to the overall network and to everyone who holds Bitcoin. I think there will be nation states that come in. Wall Street was inevitable. Um, but most importantly, you know, this was a working class phenomenon that trickled 
hold up. This is an emergent technology from the free market. No one is imposing this on anyone top down, which is why it's so amazing. And it's not too late. A lot of people think, oh, uh, the Bitcoin price, it's gotten away from me. Look at the price of Satoshis. Everyone can afford a, a little bit of Bitcoin starting today. And it's really important to accumulate. I mean, I think that this is the future. I think everyone will be eventually on the Bitcoin standard. And I think it's time for people to really be able to adopt a technology that will make them richer and be able to save and plan for their futures as opposed to the opposite. Right now, there is a lot of overall risk and leverage in the system and everything is underperformed compared to Bitcoin. So although it might be volatile in the short term, it might be risky if you need to make a payment in the next one month or one year to be able to you know, put everything into Bitcoin, but zoom out, look over the last four, five, 10 years. And I think Bitcoin is really the safest place to be and, and the asset class that everyone will be allocating not just a small percentage, but I think a significant percentage over the next decade. I think that these um, money managers and Wall Street, I think they're going to be recommending percentages up to 33% of portfolios. I really, really do. And wow. instead of you know focusing on the negative, I think we need to realize that there are some institutions, there are pension funds, there are you know some investors who haven't been able to allocate to Bitcoin. Hopefully that changes with things like FASB accounting rules, um, you know, evolving so that you can actually do fair market value for for Bitcoin as opposed to just marking when it goes down in terms of the the corporate treasuries and balance sheets. I think that more and more companies will start to allocate to Bitcoin and the ETF products have just been another avenue for certain investors to be able to invest in this space. And maybe it's also a starting point before they actually get real Bitcoin. Well, yeah. speaking of a starting point for real Bitcoin, uh, UK just Got a real amount of Bitcoin, $2.5 billion worth. I don't know if you saw that story there. Uh, $2.5 billion, which is almost how many subs you got. Just congrats on your uh, big new play <laughs> button. Make sure you subscribe to our <laughs> channel, everybody. But UK government just sees $2.5 billion worth of Bitcoin just this past week. What do you think the UK government is going to do? Are they going to follow US footsteps and auction this off? Or should they start hodling? And what would you recommend? Well, if they have some smart Bitcoiners working with them, then hopefully they'll recommend that, that the country hodls. But, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure. Na some nation states are going to be behind. And surprisingly, uh, we often see the, the Western nations, which I think should be at the forefront of this type of technology. They're the ones that are sort of pushing against it. And so instead, we'll see some of these developing nations, like we saw El Salvador, maybe move to this uh, mo monetary standard first. But again, whoever adopts it first will benefit more. That doesn't mean that you, you don't benefit if you adopt it seven years from now, but if you adopt it now, it's certainly going to be a lot better. And El Salvador is a perfect example of that. Yeah. And you had the opportunity to recently interview Michael Saylor here, who has talked about becoming a Bitcoin development company. So of course, there is the underlying asset of Bitcoin itself, but we're seeing more and more companies such as Marathon Digital uh, announce their Bitcoin sidechains, their layer twos, their slipstream services to offer, of course, a better transaction for their mempool providers through these ordinals and all of this new adoption that's coming within the system. Do you have any insight from that hour long interview about where the development is heading for Bitcoin's ecosystem and all of these different payment solutions? All I know is that the ecosystem is very robust and growing. I mean, we had basically a two year bear market and a mm -hmm. lot of people just focused on building during that time. I was able to meet a lot of different companies, many of them actually focusing on the Lightning Network so that they can empower Bitcoin to be a very secure transaction network. I think this is going to be really important, especially for businesses. I mean, when you zoom out, the cybersecurity of a nation is our businesses being able to securely transact with one another globally. Globally. And with all of the risks that exist in a digital economy with denial of service attacks and AI and, and all of that, we need a trust network. And Bitcoin is that valuable trust network. And so Michael Saylor is certainly taking advantage of the Bitcoin network in that way. I know a lot of companies also are. There are a lot of amazing people that are just trying to build, um, coming up with ideas, doing incubators like Wolf in New York and, and others. And so I think it's really exciting. And when we you know, fast forward five, 10 years, I can't even imagine how many companies will exist in this space, including more killer apps where you can, you know, just make it very easy and convenient for people to have Bitcoin wallets, um, be able to safely store their Bitcoin in self-custody, which I think is really important and be able to transact with one another as a medium of exchange.
Well, I, I have a follow up on that Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem because there's a large contingent of Bitcoin whales who they'll just never part with their Bitcoin. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to dive into the DeFi ecosystem, aka they don't want to touch Ethereum. They don't want to touch Aave. They don't want to touch stable coins. They just like their big shine, big shiny yellow coin. I'm just going to keep it that way, orange coin. But what about Bitcoin L2s sparking interest in DeFi? Do you think the old school Bitcoin whales? They've had Bitcoin for more than 10 years. Will they be attracted to the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem or will they see that under the same lens as Ethereum DeFi? You know, I think it will depend. I mean, hardcore Bitcoiners are, are not for any of the other tokens, but there are certainly people that are interested in the ordinals and, and different things being built on top of Bitcoin. The greatest thing about this is this is really the freest market that I think exists in our economy. Um, there are no uh, rulers. There are just rules that you have to follow in Bitcoin, which I think is fantastic. And it levels the playing field in what is otherwise a very rigged financial system that benefits the few at the expense of the many. So so, you know, let let the market speak for itself. Let things that are meant to fail actually fail and not be bailed out and let the things that win, you know, rise to the surface. And that'll be based on quality and value and merit, I think. And what do you mean by the financial system has failed just for everybody that's new that's coming to these markets? Because I think, you know, sometimes we forget that there's a whole world out there that's not a part of crypto. And as soon as they come into these markets, they see Bitcoin hitting $60,000, they see it hitting $70,000. That's when they finally decide to make that decision to enter the market. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they come into tops of cycles and end up hurting themselves. So what is it about Bitcoin that is so just beautiful in this absence of a failing system? What is that failing system? And again, what does that failing infrastructure look like to you? Yeah, so I think it's really important for people to take some time and study the history of money because what we what we do see is the rise and fall of empires, all of which at some point were the global reserve currency because there's so much power and privilege that comes with being able to issue a currency. And every nation state issues a currency, right? But there is one that is the most powerful. And we've certainly had so many advantages globally by being the, the global reserve currency. I don't think that's going to be the case for the next hundred years years because I see fiat overall as a failed experiment since we've depegged it from anything of real value, anything uh, like gold. We used to be on the gold standard. And when you remove any tether to the real world and something that actually is backing the currency like with gold, then I think you, you move into a system where, again, someone is printing the money. They have to continue to issue credit and issue more and more dollars. And, uh, and, and the working class is who really pays for that because the money it, with the Cantillon effect, it pools at the top. The people that are the most credit worthy, the big corporations, the wealthy, they see the money first. It benefits you if you're close to the money printer at the expense of everyone else who continually sees their currency debased. What's great about Bitcoin is a lot of people say it's backed by nothing. Well, actually, it's backed by energy and you can't cheat energy, right? That's why the, the network is immutable. No transaction has ever been reversed or needed to be reversed in that sense because it is the truth network that when you send something from here globally around the world, it will be final settlement. It's not credit. It's not anyone's liability. It's not an IOU, which is completely different from the system we currently reside in. And so I think that's why this paradigm shift is so hard for so many people to understand because we live in a system based on credit where people issue money, including banks, money that does not exist, that wasn't deferred savings. It's just made out of thin air and devalues everyone else's units or dollars or whatever currency. And Bitcoin is fundamentally different. It is no one's liability. It is tied to energy. It is the most powerful computing network in the world. And it's based on real value. I think it's going to level the playing field when it comes to our economic activity, which is really the base layer of all of human interaction around the globe. Yeah, I have to completely agree with that. I think there's two ways you can make a lot of money coming up into this next century. And that is either become a politician and be lobbied uh, because that's obviously the easiest way to print money or actually build and become a part of Bitcoin's ecosystem. Natalie, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. And thank you so much uh, for joining us. And congrats again on all the success on your channel. Well, thank you so much. And that's the whole point of Bitcoin. Decouple the power from these politicians who just enrich themselves. If they couldn't print money, they wouldn't be able to do that as easily. So that's why I'm for Bitcoin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Can we play the, uh, the video of Nancy Pelosi going tic-tac-toe? Winner. <laughs> I, guess I, I still love that video, but Natalie, absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Congrats on the play button, too. 100K. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was a uh, tic tac toe winner. When that was she good. was, uh, she always, was like always demolishing on TikTok good, or whatever. I always love hearing some good bullish Bitcoin action. Uh, just, you know, every now and then it is good to be reminded that in a sense, we have a failed system. And I say a failed system because they print money out of thin air and they're raising debt to unmanageable levels. And we're getting to the point where our debt is worth more than, you know, what we're going to be earning uh, pretty soon. And I actually almost forgot to show you this, guys. I have a, a tweet that I wanted to share here. Uh, this is just the personified visual visualization of what our money looks like here. Now, let me see. I have to. Oh, it's under my likes here. So. All right. We can, oh, uh, first, uh, this P. Diddy was prescient. Um, this is from a music video, 1990, 27 years ago. Diddy made a music video where he jumps on a plane and he's like escaping from the authorities. Uh, if you haven't heard, his plane's on the run. Yeah. I heard he's not on the plane, probably carrying evidence. Folks, let's just be real here. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's uh, the Cardano girls thing. That was very, very funny. If you guys haven't seen that, really, really good job. But uh, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Yeah, I look at a lot of Magic the Gathering stuff. Here we go. Oh, this Buckle is crazy. Up. So first, let, let's look at that. All right, that's a $100 bill. These are $100 bills. There's 10000 That's what a million dollars looks like. We're about to see a person. That's playing. There's luggage. I guess that's music. Oh. There's luggage. So that's what $10 million looks like. There's SBF. He's uh, sitting on top of your funds. <laughs> that's, that's SBF right there. <laughs> All right, so now we're at a billion. Look at the difference between 100 million and a billion. All right, whoa, there's SBF again. I, no, that's his brother. Um, all right, so now we're at $10 billion. Let's see what 100 billion that's, looks that's like. That's a third of micro strategy. Think about that. This is starting to look a little bit nuts, folks. 100 Hold billion. Hold on, go back, go, back to the, uh, go back to the 10 billion really quick right there. Is that the 10 billion? Yeah. So. If for just kind of perspective, if that were Michael Saylor, he'd be sitting on three of those stacks. That Woo! is how big their company is now. Woo! I like that. Now we are. Uh, don't worry. There's only two more. Uh, now we're looking at a hundred billion, and then the last one. This is what we print every one hundred days. And so when you're, you know, you have a relative. Oh, I'm not going to buy Bitcoin at this level. Well, the folks, United States prints that every hundred. That was a trillion. It's more. They print more than that. Think about uh, that. 1.2 trillion is the bill they just passed. Yeah, but that, that'll be for, uh, you know, like a given oh, yeah, period. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, on average, uh, we're printing a trillion every 100 days. Unsustainable, many would say. And here is my uh, favorite clip from Nancy Pelosi ever. And I think this is the only reason why. This is, this is the best thing that she's ever done. I don't know if you guys have seen this clip. Let me reset this audio real quick. You have to hear this. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Uh, this is them saying that they need to get rid of TikTok. And somehow she makes a correlation to tic-tac-toe. Uh, and here you go. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe. A winner. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's like... She, that's one of those uh, ideas when you hear the, a politician do it and you're what? like, their analyst wouldn't allow this, their campaign manager wouldn't allow this. It's like the older person saying, yeah, it's a good idea. And they just let the 85-year-old person just do whatever they want. It reminds me of a certain candidate. Uh, he did a video where he was, hey, I, I'm, I'm hip with the, the youth and urban and they were talking about basketball while eating fried chicken in a living room. And it's like only him would come up with that idea. His analysts were like, no, don't do it. But they did it. Uh, that was it was just off. I hope you guys were able to hear that audio. But that uh, was uh, yeah, tic-tac-toe, a winner. Arrow is in price discovery, DZ. Every time I take profits, my coin, the, the coins shoot higher. Would you take profits here or wait? Uh, you know, if you're going to take profits, put it into a new play. Right now, I'm not taking profits and putting it in Tether or putting it in USDM, anything like that. A lot of comments on the combo of turtleneck and jacket uh the best comment i heard was or i read was a uh, vegas table magician all right I, okay yeah i got vegas table magician I'll, I'll give you that one also someone said it looked like john deaton and then nick said no juan deaton i'll, I'll take juan juan, deaton. juan, juan deaton. deaton i like that one that was that there i got some good ones today uh we have inside trader crook yeah that is also that's that's her stage name uh, the man on the right was her laughing. Someone pointed out the guy was like cracking up in there. But yeah, well, guys, let's get to the altcoins, right? We just had an amazing surprise oh, yeah. guest here join us today, guys. Let's get to the altcoin section of this show because that's what everybody wants to hear, right? And then so, the five calls. I got two, you got mm -hmm. three. It's going to melt faces. Oh, yeah. So let's smash that like button. Get excited, guys, and strap in for some yeah, more when, amazing When you buy this calls. altcoin, it's like looking at the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Your face is going to melt.
So we have osmosis and dynamics you don't get the, okay. and synthetics. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up articles at the same time. Yeah, I'm, I'm juggling here. I'm these. bringing you I'm gold. not a magician. I'm spinning okay? gold. I'm not a magician. I can't keep pulling these out of my, uh, my turtleneck. Uh, but most actively <laughs> developed DeFi projects, Animate says. So this is just going back to where we get to take these victory laps, guys, with Aero, with Velodrome, with these projects, this DeFi. Uh, these are starting to see a huge increase in development on their networks. And that is always just bullish for the overall market. It says more people are coming into the industry and they're gonna be moving into DeFi. Osmosis, Didix, and Synthetics are the ones that are leading that here. Cheat Sheet, Ethereum, and L2s on track to beat Bitcoin for active addresses. This, I believe, will change with runes. But there are many times in every market cycle where stuff just goes up because Bitcoin isn't going down. Can it, can it, uh, we actually cover a Cosmos ecosystem play in last night's video. We should just make them go watch oh, that. No way. I, I tell you, a guaranteed airdrop, too. Well, we have cryptocurrencies for alt blockchains like Quant, Near, and Ton are close behind between 15% and 11%. They've been seeing some decent moves here. But what I really want to just cover again was the topic of layer twos. This is where we're heading. So all growth has instead shifted the popular layer twos, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, and ZK Sync. Opti excuse me. Optimism and Base here, guys, are the ones where we've been talking about the DEXs. This is Aerodrome, and again, this was Velodrome. So one on Arbitrum hasn't moved yet. I'm going to give you guys the first, uh, the first <laughs> altcoin of the stream here that I am definitely watching. It is going to be Thala THL. Now, it has moved a little bit, but this is essentially the aerodrome again and the velodrome of, of course, Aptos. So this is going to be, or that's not Arbitrum, sorry, this is Aptos. Uh, so I, I jumped ahead a little bit. This is Aptos' DEX here. So if you guys want another DEX that I'm watching, this is definitely another one. It's going to be a little bit smaller of a market cap here. That is Thala. The yeah, one bro, on... This is $36 million market cap. $36 million, the huh? other, They're both small. On Holy Aptos? Crap. Aptos is blowing yeah. up. Well, the coin is up, but $36 million is... It's small. small, but that's like the development of these layer twos, right? The other one is still Camelot, which we call that, I think, like $1,500 on the channel, which is another DEX for Arbitrum is what I was supposed to jump into first. So I already accidentally leaked two of the five coins here, guys. Uh, but these ecosystems are insanely early, and that's where you got to find these next trends. That's where you're going to find that opportunity. And as we see more development, you see more money flood into these ecosystems. Of course, it's going to equate to bullish price action for its DeFi. Uh, I got to go back to the article here. On top of that, though, there was an announcement. I guess uh, Jensen, uh, the CEO of NVIDIA, said uh, near protocol is very cool. That was his uh, exact words. This is words. the big takeaway that everyone's talking about that. Uh, Huang touched near founder's arm. Uh, Twitter is just going, you know, X is just wow. having a lot of fun with this. Uh, some people... A second CEO has touched the near protocol speaker's <laughs> arm. Uh, there's people like, where were you when uh, the the CEO touched the speaker's arm there? So that arm touch just boosted near's fully diluted valuation by 700 million. Touch near, not grass. Uh, to me, that's that's the best part about it. It's just attention and uh, a community is really what drives a token's price. I think this is really just kind of letting. This is a personification of that. We're like. We were talking about this uh, NVIDIA conference. You live streamed it, okay? That's mm -hmm. how far ahead we are. We were we were talking about it ahead of time. But the community ran with this photo, and then that's what ends up pumping in the market. Yeah, and another, it kind of leads perfectly into that next category, the shift in trends here. And we've seen, I've seen a couple of them in chat here. Jason Roberts said, Ondo, Aerodrome, and Velodrome. This man is printing off our channel right now because these have been a lot of the projects we have been covering here. But RWA tokens rally 81% in just one week as institutions dive deeper into on-chain finance. So if you guys want an industry as a whole that I believe can 21X as itself, it is going to be RWAs. And it's a perfect uh, perfect segue, really, into this segment sponsors, which, of course, guys, is going to be Kooladao.io, uh, which is impacting investments using blockchain technology for, of course, none other than real-world assets. Kula has received pre-approval for, again, the VARA, the Virtual Assets Re uh, Regulatory Authority in Dubai, the UAE, putting us on the trajectory to be the only regulated DAO that tokenizes natural resources and commodity in the entire world, guys. These are huge certificates. These are huge breakthroughs. Uh, and Kula will be having a token launch here later in this quarter or sometime this year. Uh, but of course, guys, the real world assets are going to be the industry that you do want to focus on. This is where BlackRock is moving into with Biddle, B-U-I-D-L. That is their stable coin that is, of course, only accessible to their extremely wealthy clients. They said, actually, hey, accredited investors, you're not even good enough. You have to be accredited with $5 million to touch our funds. So they're even moving up the bar. And that is an obvious uh, bullish catalyst for the adoption of more decentralized 
real world asset well, protocols. They, they had to move the gate, right? Because uh, they're devaluing our currency by so much that a million dollars was becoming too <laughs> attainable by the yeah. masses, too attainable by the normal Joe. And so they're like, all right, we got to go ahead and move it to five million. We got to yeah. we got to keep gatekeeping. It's so messed up. It's just go. so messed up. And, hey, hey, Josh. Yeah. I have breaking news. Breaking news. Yes. Oh, well, we uh, got to get the breaking hit. news. Hit that like button. Thank yep. you. Um, the uh, KuCoin is being uh, indicted by the DOJ. Ooh, I saw KCS on top losers, which is yep. KuCoin shares. It's probably not even a top um, 10 anymore. Three minutes ago. Yeah, DOJ. Look, yeah, uh, share the charts. The, the charts will show you the news here. Uh, KuCoin is down 5% in the last hour, which is pretty massive when uh, you start talking about can, hourly candles. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Does this mean the SEC is going to sue the DOJ for price manipulation? Let's hope so. And hurting uh, retail? A absolutely, because in a just world, that's what happens. Yes, because Gary Gensler <laughs> cares about the people and definitely doesn't pocket money from watching yeah. blockchain blabs. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Maybe. Ethgate. Uh, DOJ accuses crypto exchange KuCoin of skirting anti-money money laundering laws. I think this is going to come more and more. Uh, anybody that's offering any, any, any choice of altcoins in the United States is going to probably face these allegations from the DOJ. Uh, this is why the Coinbase lawsuit is so important. We've talked about this and coined this term about the Coinbase effect, that if they beat the SEC in court, uh, they're essentially going to becoming a they're going to become a super powerful jurisdiction. I, I'll tell you exactly what happened. They gave uh, access to Americans for too long, and that's all it is. Yeah, KuCoin cared about Americans uh, more than, of course, these institutions cared about Americans. I, and I, because of that, they're going to be sued. I probably used it more than any exchange in twenty. 21 for sure at least yeah. the first half of 2021 yeah no 100 percent. you're not allowed to you you're not allowed to spend your money on what you want that's just not how this works only mm -hmm. some some dude with his 10 other dudes in some little room that is managed by the government and lobbied by all these of course massive corporations that want to control this sector and force accredited investors to have five million dollars to invest in their financial products yeah, they're the ones that are thinking about you and taking care of you. It's so ridiculous. It's uh, we, we do have, a, we're already 1130. People are still waiting for the five altcoins. I, I'm about to reveal my two. This isn't the two, but Avalanche. Yeah, we gave two already, right? Thala and. I gave two so far. Okay. Thala gave... and Camelot, okay, which I lead got, into. I still got my two. It's not these, but Avalanche is soaring 9% as Avalanche and Chainlink announced partnership for global asset circulation. So there's multiple layers to the RWA uh ecosystem and I, I think on the high end on the high levels you're going to have a strong l2 and you're going to have the ccip with chain link and so you know just uh, kind of showing the power of these coins even they have they even though they have high market caps doesn't mean that they still can't do it like a 5x potentially even 10x uh, this cycle i think that might be a little unlikely you shared one let me go ahead and share one of the coins i'm thinking about today and that is cornucopias it looks like it is slightly on sale it is down two percent right now uh, if we go to the max chart, you can see it was higher. It was around uh, one point. It was around twelve uh, cents. So right now, coming in at nine, still got about a thirty percent pump to the upside. It is a video game on Cardano, and I've seen them uh, play testing this game at least a year and a half ago. I saw them doing it about six months ago. It looks even better right now. Uh, they're pivoting uh, metaverse to more of a. I think a racing is going to be their first. Uh, foray into the gaming play and then just really, really, really strong community. I put out an engagement tweet yesterday. What altcoin should I cover? Number one was Iagon, but Kopi was number two. And then after the show went live, is I feel like Kopi started kind of surpassing it. So I want to give Cornucopia's game their flowers here. Uh, I am bullish on it. I have a small bag, probably not big enough. I, I should probably buy some more now that it's down about 30%. So that is a total of how many tokens have we covered? Uh, that is three. Oh, real quick. Let Boom. me just uh, share the you market the cap. Oh. Under a hundred million, eighty okay. million dollar market wow. cap. So uh, wow. good, good market cap there. Yeah. Now, so again, sh I want to shout out to just all the amazing calls we've had over the last few months. I mean, there is dozens at this point that have performed really, really, really well. Uh, the next token system I'm going to talk about, guys, that I've been screaming from the rooftops is, of course, Bitcoin DeFi and Bitcoin Layer Twos. We were just asking some amazing questions for Natalie as she interviewed, of course, Michael Saylor. But Casey wrote a Rod Armara. I don't even know how to pronounce it. That's his Twitter handle. But Casey, the founder of Ordinals, tweeted out today: If the Runes ecosystem market cap doesn't hit one billion dollars within one month of launch, I will commit Sapuku. Which, if you guys know what that is, you guys get the you know, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do that. I've been watching Shogun. I know what it you is. You know, oh yeah, I I'm trying to watch Shogun, but my fiance doesn't like. That's not her her style. So I gotta like. She doesn't creep like it. cool stuff. 
not like <laughs> in-depth dialogue that you have to read, you know, you have to read the, uh, the well, no, because she likes like foreign like uh, love novels and stuff. I don't oh. know. Telenovelas? Yeah. No, no, not television. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we watch soap operas, guys. That's what we're doing. No, but the Runes ecosystem. This is what I believe. This isn't the next 21X, guys. This is the next 100X. Woo! This is, that's Whoa, how big this industry is going to be. Yes, I truly believe that. All of the money from Marathon Digital. This is a $500 billion untapped industry in Runes protocol, guys. You can't get this yet. And unfortunately, we're probably not even going to be able to get into this airdrop because it's so anticipated. This is the Solana of Bitcoin. This Whoa. is going to bring meme coins and NFTs to Bitcoin and merge retail audience that were super inclined or entwined with Solana's ecosystem. Uh, of course, Ethereum, all these NFT markets. That is going to bridge them for the first time over to Bitcoin's ecosystem. So Bitcoin DeFi, I can't name the projects. You have to hop into my Telegram if you want to see them because they're too low of market cap. I don't want to push them out on stream here. It is so early, but you want to pay attention to that Do you have industry. any under $20 million market caps? Under 30? They're almost all under 30. Ooh. Yeah, that, like it's, it's a really small, like the biggest projects in that, like you have stacks, okay? You have stacks, I can say, but that's not, I think stacks can go yeah. to a 20 billion. Alex has already moved pretty significantly. There's a lot of big breakthroughs with projects that will be the first DEXs for runes. Um, the one I think, I already swap, I think is 40 or 50 million. So that is one I really like. It's like the Uniswap of Bitcoin. They're integrating this stuff. But the other ones, yeah, they're small. This is like getting into decentralized science two years ago when I first talked about that and leads up to a very bullish thing that everybody a part of this for the first time, guys, this is why Discover is the greatest channel on the market. We care about the community. We always put the community first. Uh, we are doing the first public. This is available to everybody. No gatekeeping. You guys get in before influencers. Uh, we do have a DSI project, guys, where I have an announcement. Uh, I will be joining as an advisor on my first team ever. I've never joined a platform directly as an advisor and joined them to help them build. Well, so, you have been uh, trumpeting the alarms on DSI mm -hmm. since you got here. So, you know, I will, I will give you your flowers on that. You had the first DSI watch list on CoinMarketCap too, right? Before they if, made one. Yeah, like a year and a half. And okay, then so, so right now walk we walk the walk. We have the Bitcoin, the first Bitcoin ecosystem watch list too. Actually, you know so, what? You talk the talk, but will you turn yourself into a robot? Uh, maybe. I might okay. clone myself. Uh, okay. There's been talks with uh, Digital Twin from Ajax's hey, community. Maybe I, we could. I heard you know. that Neuralink guy, he went from playing chess to playing Mario Kart with his brain now. No wow. way. Yeah, he's playing. Oh, is there a yeah. video on that? Yeah, there's a video. Like, if he can't Dude, that's be, so cool. Like, I know it's like, there's, it's weird, but it's like, that's cool. Like, imagine <laughs> me like, like that guy. If I was paralyzed, I would do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like, every, that's, every, that's, I think a lot of people are like, oh, never do it. Well, if your circumstances were different, you might consider yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, all huge. right, my last altcoin here, number five, <laughs> right? Because that was your four, uh, that was number four. To me, this is a pretty undervalued ecosystem play on Solana. And it's a tried and true uh, play here. It's a tried and true business model. And I'm talking about the name service for Solana, like your bona fides. This is FIDA. This is something that we had months ago. See the ago. BRC20 ad above you? Uh, no, it's like some that's massive funny. Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember. It was around three months ago when we first covered this. So like, even if you bought, uh, you know, the, at the high point there, folks, we are sitting pretty good. Even if you bought that wick, uh, wow. we are healthily in profit. But if you hit max, you see a whole different story. Let me, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna hold your hand here. This, you see this and you're like, oh, this is one of those coins when you hit market cap, we're like actually at a new all time high, right? Like there's no way the market cap would look like this on price as well. No, it looks like it as well, everybody. This actually has good tokenomics. And if you look at the market cap is 70 million, I believe, no, $66 million. And they are the name service of Solana. And then, so then you think, all right, so what can I compare it to? I can compare it to the Ethereum name service. Ethereum name service at one point was a $1.6 billion market cap there. You can see it right above 1.5. Right now, it's only only it's only it's 600 million. So when you see this at 60 million, it's literally a 10x to get to where it was. Oh and God. then it's close to a 30x to hit ENS's valuation last bull run. There are some speculation that Solana coins will outperform 2021 ETH coins. I think that is a possibility. So could be looking at a potential 50x right here. I think a 10x uh, feels pretty fair. I haven't done a big, big deep dive on their tokenomics, so maybe there's some unlocks. Uh, but from what I saw and from what I remember from about two, three months ago, pretty strong tokenomics. I would keep an eye out on the name service for Solana. Feels undervalued so, at 60 million. We have breaking news because That's that, that right? pre-sale, of course, was this morning. Sold out. 
I thought it was going to be going on after the stream. It sold out in 10 minutes. So this is, of course, part of the ICP community, guys. This is Noble Blocks. Uh, this is the project we'll be joining and working with closely at Discover. Uh, but it is essentially the research coin of the IC community. They've received multiple grants from ICP themselves. Uh, yeah, they sold out in 10 minutes. So this is probably going to be the most hyped uh, DSI launch of the entire year. Uh, and their global community is growing. So that's really cool to see. All right. Followed by Rodney. Okay. Some DGens are going to start looking at this one. Okay. All right. I like their uh, logo. It looks like a squiggle. Looks like a little squiggle. <laughs> looks like a little squiggle. Uh, but guys, that's what we got for you guys today. We got tons of awesome opportunity coming up, guys. And shout out to everybody that has been in the Discord, in the Telegrams, on our Twitters, following our threads. You know, you guys, we've been printing. And honestly, with that, I couldn't be more excited. What a great bull run this is off to a start. And uh, DZ, if you have anything left to say, let's go make some more money. All right. Uh, yeah, what was it? I wanted to read it. Uh, Discord channel. Yeah, we should have a link down below. If not, maybe we can add it real quick. Yeah, we got Discord. It's lit. Ooh.